11 dialogue, writing a short story, a report or a review. Gauging that Emma probably doesn't have enough knowledge about the six different writing formats, Gordon thinks it would be a good idea to hone in on these. He wants to see exactly what Emma already knows and then give her some good tips. Okay, Emma. So, as Terry said before there are six writing formats from which you will have to pick two to complete. The three formats which we are going to focus on for now are stories, reports and reviews. Tell me, are there any basic guidelines you're already aware of when it comes to stories? Well, friends have told me that it is absolutely essential to plan what I am going to write. I've heard that for the story option, a lead-in sentence is provided which candidates then have to follow on from. So, obviously, it is important to not change this sentence. Yes, of course. And a plan is definitely necessary as it is for all writing exercises. Planning helps you to get your thoughts in order and gives you a structure to follow so your answer flows well. Also, I find that when students have a plan, it calms their nerves and they feel a lot more relaxed. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit in detail about the structure and grammar points you should pay attention to. You should set your story out into four paragraphs. The first paragraph should obviously be your introduction, then have two for the body of the text, then finish with a climax or post-climax reaction in the final paragraph. Colon should I avoid having more than four paragraphs? Not at all. If your story is quite meaty and you feel like there is a lot to tell, you can have more than two middle paragraphs, just make sure that you have at least four. I would just advise four because it keeps you in line and stops you from babbling and going off on too much of a tangent. Ah, uh, I see what you mean, okay. As for grammar, should I have a checklist of grammar points to include? I'd say so, yes. For example, you should use as many different tenses as possible. You should use past continuous to give background information like the sun was shining when. Also, you should try to use past perfect to describe actions which are a prelude to the story and then simple past for the other main events. Also, try to use a mixture of direct speech and indirect speech. Okay, is there any advice you can give me on vocabulary? Yes, I would recommend learning lots of phrases of time like a few hours later and eventually as well as phrases for dramatic effect such as all of a sudden. Let's move on to reports. Do you know anything about how to write these? To be honest, I haven't got a clue. Okay, no problem. As I stressed before, you need to plan. Regarding the structure, again you should have four paragraphs, all with headings. These headings should be introduction and conclusion for the first and last paragraphs. For the other two paragraphs, you should choose a heading which explains the content of the following paragraph, e.g. suggestions or problems. At the top of the report, you should write, T, followed by the recipient's name, a line below that you should write from with your name and then below that, it is a great idea to point out the subject of the report. Okay, do I need to put the date on? It's not obligatory but you can if you wish. As for grammar and vocabulary, I would advise you to use formal language and avoid using contractions because you want to give off a sophisticated and formal tone in wish to consider. Finally, I can't stress enough, go through your report at the end to check for mistakes. So, tell me Emma. How do you feel about reviews? I suppose it is essential to give my own opinion because I am giving a review of something from my own personal perspective. Should the tone of the text be sophisticated like a report? Actually, it should be the opposite. A review should be written in a chatty and friendly style to help to connect and identify with the reader. This can therefore be reflected in the grammar as well. It is perfectly acceptable to use contractions. Once again, 
have at least four paragraphs, plan and review. In the introductory paragraph, you should introduce whatever you are reviewing, then in the concluding paragraph, you should be very opinionated, using phrases which highlight either positive or negative perspectives. What type of vocabulary do you think you should learn? I imagine that it would be best to learn lots of vocabulary about things which are possible to be reviewed, such as films, books or even restaurants. Exactly right, Emma. Well done.